Um, so first of all, sorry, um, I apologize that the uh, the logistics of the event have uh, have changed. Uh, originally, we were supposed to have uh, four four talks on on open tofu. There's a little mishap uh, with the the speakers uh, that they couldn't fly from Israel to to make it. So, so instead, here I am. I apologize that for the regression there. Uh, but I promise next year will be a lot better with a full track and uh, lots of great talks, and uh, not just me singing and dancing here. Um, so before we get started. Um, Raise your hand here if you already use Open Tofu. All right, a handful. That's encouraging. Uh, raise your hand if you're planning to use Open Tofu. Yes, that's awesome. And raise your hand if you're not planning to use Open Tofu. All right. Well, <laughs> you now know who to talk to to convince. Awesome. Um, all right. So I'm here to talk uh, to to talk a little bit about Open Tofu. Answer your questions and uh, clear up some some of the uh, misconceptions and uh, and just overall just uh, evangelize the, uh, the, uh, the work that uh, the community is doing. So uh, I'm going to be talking about what Open Tofu is, for the few that, uh, that don't know, why it matters, the, the progress we've made on the, pr uh, on the project. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the con uh, contributors behind it, the community behind it, how to contribute. Um, for those that are just getting started, um, little cheat sheets on, on how to do that. Um, and then I'm going to elaborate on what's next for the project and then do a Q&A uh, and answer uh, all your questions and dodge all your tomatoes. Uh, all right, so a little bit, uh, little bit about me. I'm Sebastian Seidel. I'm one of the core members of, uh, of Open Tofu. Um, I'm also the CEO of a company called Skater, which makes commercial products for both Terraform up to 1.5.7 and, uh, and Open Tofu. Uh, all right, so what is Open Tofu? You might have seen this meme circulating. Uh, I love it. Um, essentially, it's a fork uh, of uh, the latest, uh, the last open source version of Terraform, 1.5.6. We backported 1.5.7. Um, and the way to think about it is 1.6 uh, is the first release of uh, Open Tofu, which is uh, binary compatible with, um, with Terraform. Um, so uh, it looks a little bit like this. It's a declarative model for managing infrastructure. Um, and, uh, and so this is one of the parts that I want to stress. Um, Open Tofu is compatible with all of the plugins and providers uh, out there. Uh, so you, we don't need to fork all the providers. We don't need to make uh, copies of them. If you are the author of a provider, you don't have to make a second one just for Open Tofu. Uh, one of the core guiding principles of Open Tofu is maintaining comp compatibility with all of those providers. So there, um, in addition to that, we're 100% compatible with all of the modules out there. So all the code, all the modules you've written already for Terraform work out of the box for Open Tofu. And if by any chance you see any problem with that, uh, a provider that works in Terraform doesn't work with Open Tofu, uh, or a module that does and doesn't, uh, let us know. We will jump on that and fix it straight away. Uh, so far, we haven't seen any such case, uh, but we are very dearly committed to making sure that the uh, the, t the transition uh, migration is, uh, is seamless. Uh, finally, sadly, uh, HashiCorp has also uh, changed the license on the Terraform uh, registry. So we created an Open Tofu registry, uh, and, uh, and we have great plans to expand on the functionality there. Um, the plans aren't solid yet, so I won't speak to those specifically. But um, if, you, if you go to GitHub and you read some of the issues that have been posted there, you'll, uh, you'll be able to find out a lot more. All right, so open Tofu and Terraform in general, infrastructure as code even, uh, matter, matters a lot to me. Um, for the reason why, uh, with everyone, with the community, we forked Terraform um, is very different why some folks forked other uh, HashiCorp products. Uh, for us, Terraform is first and foremost a language um, that we've ba based and built an ecosystem around. And less so of a product and more so of, um, uh, of that language. And so as a result of that, it's really for us a foundation for all of the infrastructure management and a very, very important part of, uh, of, uh, of DevOps and us building uh, the plumbing of the internet. Um, and as a result of that, it's, it's really, um, for a long time, We've been a little bit frustrated that, uh, that Terraform was, sure, open source, but it wasn't openly developed. There was a lot of PRs that got rejected, uh, a lot of really quality con contributions that never made, uh, made their way into Terraform. Um, and, um, and a lot of that is because you know, it competes with the roadmap of Terraform Cloud or Terraform Enterprise. And so there's a lot of conflict of interest there. 
Um, and so when, uh, when HashiCorp decided to relicense future versions of Terraform to, uh, to the BSL, um, that provided the impetus for all of us to finally do something about it. And uh, the Linux Foundation was very receptive to the project. Um, and they reached out to us. We had some, uh, some good conversations there. Um, and then we decided that we would fork it and that the fork would live in, uh, in the Linux Foundation. Um, for those who don't really know how, how the Linux Foundation works, um, they provide a really good gov governance framework for how, uh, for how to govern uh, large, large scale projects. Um, and they provide, uh, uh, that governance uh, framework provides uh, like a, a technical steering committee to resolve differences that always occur when you have um, contributors from different organizations contribute that might take the product in, or the project in different directions. And so the Linux Foundation really provides a governance framework for uh, long-term longevity of all these projects. A simple example of that would be to graduate from uh, an incubating project, you have to have at least five uh, independent organizations that are contributing to the project, right? So it's not driven by a single one. Um, lots of other little, little tidbits like that. So if you are ever considering uh, an open source project, Linux Foundation is a great home for that, and they've been nothing but supportive and helpful, uh, helpful to us. Um, all right, so a little bit about the timeline. Uh, this has all been so quick. Uh, it's just hard to think that like, just six months ago we were just getting started. So on August 10, that's, uh, that was the, the start of it all, right? Uh, HashiCorp decide, like, announces that they're going to relicense under the BSL. Um, Along with uh, a lot of other folks in the community that, uh, that were frustrated by this change, we, we got organized. Uh, we, we iterated through a couple drafts of, uh, of our kind of our shared beliefs on wh what we wanted uh, the, the direction of a project to go. Put out a manifesto. Hopefully you guys have read that. Um, but essentially it's, uh, it puts out kind of like all the shared beliefs of the, the folks in the community uh, around openness, uh, around transparency, open development, um, and all of that. Uh, we waited a week, we got no answer. We waited a couple extra days, we got no answer, and sadly, uh, never actually got an answer from, from HashiCorp, um, and, um, and that's unfortunate. Uh, so, as a result of that, we started working on, uh, on an open tofu repo, um, and, uh, and then September 20th in Bilbao is when we officially joined the Lynx Foundation, we signed all the documents, uh, and that's when we announced, uh, announced the project uh, to the world. Um, since then, it's been such, uh, s such, uh, such a fun uh, ride. Um, we had a release candidate in, that we announced in OSS Tokyo. Uh, I think that was uh, December 5, something like that. Uh, we then uh, continued working on fixing the last few changes and bugs that we needed to make. And uh, I'm ha very happy to say that as of January 10, uh, OpenTofu is now production ready, uh, in, used in production by like 150 different organizations now. Um, and it's stable, it's ready to be used. Um, nobody's really reported any kind of, uh, any issue that, that's, uh, that, would, uh, that is impactful. And so we're, uh, we're just very happy that we were able to, in just a few <laughs> months, um, make, a, make a fork, create, a, create the Open Tofu registry and make something that's production ready and stable. Um, all right, so, um, depending on the week, uh, OpenTofu is or isn't uh, one of the fastest growing communities uh, on GitHub. Um, and uh, it's just been awesome to see like the thousands and thousands of people that have started the project, that have you know, posted issues. Um, I think there's something like uh, we just passed 80 uh, unique contributors. About half of those are just one time, uh, which we're per per perfectly happy with. But about 40, the other half 40 uh, are folks that, ha that have posted. Uh, made multiple contributions, and we're even more thankful for that. Um, so, a uh, little call to action of all, all of you folks. Um, for, uh, for contributing is super important, um, but you don't have to contribute code. Like you guys know the, know the rundown for all open source projects. The, at this point in time, uh, we have more than enough engineering resources. Uh, what we're really looking for is folks to um, use, uh, use the project, evangelize. If, uh, if you know folks that are using Terraform uh, and are not yet con uh, considering OpenTofu, spread the word, that's super important. Um, and, uh, and just generally using it uh, and reporting bugs and uh, su suggesting improvements. Uh, quick, um, 
uh, quick cheat sheet on uh, how to think about uh, upgrading. So if you are currently using Terraform, uh, this is kind of how it looks like. If you're already using Terraform, um, if you think about it this way, t typically folks don't use the late and only use the latest version, right? You've got this bell curve of what versions you have in an organization. Uh, some deployments might use 1.3, some might be use 1.13 uh, or, or others. Um, and then you have this bell curve, and then uh, some use the, the latest, uh, latest versions. Um, if you are on any version of Terraform prior to 1.5.6 or 0.7, um, your, the safest bet is to, con to migrate up to 1.5.x uh, or 0.7 um, before considering up, um, upgrading and, and moving to OpenTofu. Just a lot safer, um, and that's the, rec the kind of best practice, what we recommend to folks. Uh, again, as a reminder, Terraform is open source up to 1.5.7, which is the last open source release. Um, and if you're creating a new project, you might as well start it in OpenTofu. Um, there you go. Uh, there's, uh, so um, most folks in the community have uh, just replaced the Terraform binary with the Tofu binary and reported zero issues in doing so. Um, a lot of folks have also said that uh, for all the, all the, rather than refactoring and changing a lot of the automation that they built on top, uh, sometimes they just made an alias for it and they report that that works perfectly fine. Um, that does introduce a little bit of debt, but uh, you know, uh, as far as moving fast, that, that works. Um, and of the 100, 150 or so uh, folks that we've, uh, we've talked to, uh, none have reported any significant issues in making that. So the takeaway of all of this is migrating to OpenTofu is very, very easy. And, um, and if you like the direction of the project, then we encourage you to do that. Um, if you are not using Terraform, uh, if you're not using OpenTofu, then um, a lot of people have already extolled the virtues of, um, of using, uh, using infrastructure as code, but it's, uh, essentially it's more maintainable code, it's easier to read, it's a better abstraction, um, and there's a very fast growing community of resources, so when you get stuck, lots of people can help, um, and uh, chances are that whether you're using Stack Overflow or ChatGPT or something, chances are you'll be able to get good guidance. Um, all right, a little bit about the release model. Um, so 1.6 was really about getting, the, getting a stable release as, into your hands as fast as possible. Uh, we've done that. Um, and there's really no compelling reason to use 1.6 other than it's just open source uh, under the MPL. Uh, but starting with 1.7, that's when the, the recent model uh, is that we'll, every new release will have a, um, a flagship feature, which uh, hopefully will be compelling enough to uh, to help you make the arguments inside your organizations to, uh, to make the switch. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about uh, 1.7, but, um, uh, but the, the idea here is uh, we're you know, a community-driven project, and if you have any uh, workflows that you want to, to see improved, uh, let us know. Um, in 1.7 is the very first of uh, these flagship, flagship features. Um, for those who have been in Terraform for a long time, uh, the very first time that client-side uh, state encryption was, uh, so it was uh, made as a PR to the uh, Terraform repository within, was in 2016. Um, it, uh, it went nowhere. In 2017, there was another such proposal that also went nowhere. It did get a response that, uh, that uh, HashiCorp's plans was that encryption were to happen at the ter on, in their on the roadmap of their commercial offerings. And that's the rationale that, uh, that they gave to, for rejecting the PR. Uh, a third such attempt happened in 2021 um, that also sadly got rejected. And, uh, and so once we, we made the uh, f first, uh, first uh, once we made the repository of uh, OpenTofu available, the contributor um, reached out to us, made a, created an issue, and uh, suggested uh, to uh, finally get that feature in. So we've been working with them for a while now. Uh, and uh, we're super excited to see this is the very first community contribution. It's been um, a long-standing thing that, uh, that folks have wanted in Terraform. Uh, and because, of, uh, because OpenTofu doesn't have the, uh, the conflict of interest that you see in, um, in Terraform, uh, it was easy to get that in. Uh, and it'll be the flagship feature for 1.7. 
Um, so in the uh, uh, in that feature, you will we'll support the, uh, the the four major uh, lifecycle events for encryption: uh, initial key, initial uh, encryption, key rotation, moving away from state uh, encryption should you decide to do that, as well as uh, switching uh, encryption providers um, if you want to do that too. Um, I think everyone knows what encryption is and why it's useful, so I'll gloss over that. Um, but uh, we're, pre we're pretty excited about having, having that in. Um, and this is what it looks like, right? Uh, this is someone from the community, not a core, uh, not a core contributor, uh, creates an issue. If you look at the date, August 29, this is just like a few days after we opened the, the repository, or e the day of, I think. Um, and uh, and uh, so uh, Stefan um, uh, suggested that. We discussed it. Uh, we didn't want it in 1.6 because, one, again, 1.6 is the, the goal was to get something super stable as early as possible in your hands. Um, but one in, it'll be the uh, flagship feature for 1.7. Um, and, um, and it's a really good, uh, so also just a really good discussion with lots of, uh, lots of things to learn from if you just follow that thread. Um, we haven't yet decided what we want to the flagship feature to be in 1.8. Uh, we have some good candidates, but, uh, but we don't have a mon monopoly on all that, so we're, we're expecting uh, folks in the community to, to suggest, uh, suggest things. Um, if you've got a workflow uh, that's kind of broken, if you've got a use case that's poorly handled, um, just uh, create, a, create an issue, describe the, the problem, maybe go into a little bit of a proposed solution. And uh, and then we'll we'll look at all of uh, all of the candidates there, and then we'll uh, we'll pick one to be the flagship feature. Um, and in the re release model, um, we release as soon as that flagship feature is done. Whatever else is done, will ship with that feature uh, with that release. Um, and um, and so that's the that's the this, this, the decided release model for now. Um, and if you want guidance on how to do that, again, issue 297 uh, for the uh, client-side state encryption is, uh, what is, provides a really good example of uh, kind of what, what we would like to see in a perfect, um, uh, in a perfect uh, issue. Uh, all right, so before we get into the Q&A, I just want to reiterate one more time, uh, because I was at FOSDEM the last two days. Uh, before that, I was in OS at OSS Tokyo. Before that, OSS Bilbao. And there's a, there's a recurring question that comes up all the time. Um, do the providers need to be forked? And the answer, just like I said just a little bit earlier, no, providers don't need to be forked. There are some uh, providers that are in the HashiCorp namespace. Uh, we're just syncing those over. Um, and, uh, but if you're a provider author, uh, or if you're thinking about making a provider, you're not, you don't have to make another one. Uh, the, uh, the Open Topo team is committed to making sure that all the modules, that all of the, um, uh, all the providers just, just work, and, main, and making sure that those continue working for the, uh, the long-term future. Uh, I talked a little bit more about 1.8, so I don't think I need to go over that a little bit. But, um, uh, a little bit earlier, I was talking about the philosophy that we believe Terraform to be mostly a language more than a software project. Um, and, and that's why the core OpenTofu community is not, uh, is not going to make forks of other HashiCorp products. Now, there are other op uh, forks that, that, uh, that have seen uh, le so different levels of success. Um, but because those are mostly products, um, it's, there's less of a philosophical uh, point of view there, and, um, and so we are taking, a, taking an approach to just focus on open tofu. Um, and so I just want to give a shout out to OpenBow, which is the open source fork of Vault. Uh, staying with the, uh, the food theme there, if uh, it's after lunch, I guess so you guys aren't hungry, but uh, I am a little bit. Um, and uh, essentially, uh, I can't say that it's, it's, not an officially, uh, it's not an official IBM project, um, that being said, um, the developers of OpenBow are employed at IBM. Um, there's also two other major organizations that are con making contributions to OpenBow. Uh, and so uh, whether that project uh, uh, finishes incubating or not, I don't really know. But if you're using Vault, you, could, uh, you can take a look and join that community as well. All right, back to the Q&A. Um, hopefully, I, we, I, we left enough time for, for a good amount of questions. Yeah, awesome. Go for it. Um, so I'll repeat the question after. You, you talked about uh, 1.7, the flagship feature, being yep. encryption. 
uh, why would I use that encryption over rather than just encrypting my S3 bucket? Yep. So the question is, why use uh, client-side encryption instead of uh, instead of just using the encryption in your S3 bucket? Um, good, good question. Um, so there's a there's a number of use cases uh, for why you would want to do that. One, um, you, for example, if you're um, uh, if you're a, uh, maybe your AWS account gets compromised in, in some way, uh, you might want to use an, an encryption key that is not tied to your AWS account. Uh, we know of one organization that uses their Azure uh, encryption keys to encrypt state uh, before storing it in S3. Uh, there's another use case, which is um, sometimes you use a commercial solution, like on well, my company, Scalar. There's also Spacelift. There's N0. There's Digger. There's a bunch of others. And you might not trust those organizations fully uh, to host the, the, uh, all your states. And so you might want to uh, encrypt that before storing it uh, in those commercial projects. Um, um, and then finally, there's a, I mean, shit always happens, right? So like the, if you control end-to-end -end encryption, you've got a gr much greater control over uh, where, uh, where problems might arise. So those are the, 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 the main use cases. Um, and uh, I'm sure I'm missing some, but uh, yeah. Great question. Go for it. I'll repeat it. Yeah. What do you see as the challenges for maintaining compatibility with Terraform going forward? Yeah, so the question is, what are the challenges in maintaining compatibility going forward? Um, yeah, so we've thought a lot about that. Um, so we're, uh, we're going to decide on compatibility on a uh, long term on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, and so again, we're really community driven. So if there's a uh, feature that is in later versions of Terraform um, that the community would like to see in OpenTofu as well, um, then hopefully someone in the community will create an issue and then we'll look at that and uh, look at the issue um, and then we'll consider adding that as well. Um, and uh, we've got a very strict process for doing that so we, because again, we, we can't taint the code for OpenTofu by looking at, the, uh, looking at the Terraform code. So the way we, we would do that is if you had a feature that you'd like to see in OpenTofu that you saw in Terraform, you would um, create that issue, describe the problem, describe the solution. Um, and then without looking at any of the code, uh, we would take that on uh, and try to, you know, tr try to replicate uh, the, the, the solution that you're describing. Um, and, uh, and then if it works, great, we'll incorporate it in. If it doesn't, we'll just keep iterating. Um, but to, in, in terms of deciding, like on a, it'll, they're different projects, so over time they will diverge. So the best time to migrate is right now. Um, but as they diverge, uh, there will be a lot of OpenTofu exclusive features. Um, Client-side state encryption is one. There are, there's a laundry list of other improvements that we don't know if they will make their way into Terraform. Uh, so the projects will diverge. And, and if you're using those, it makes it harder to migrate to Terraform should you ever get crazy and want to do that. Um, but, uh, but for the migration from Terraform to OpenTofu, um, that'll be decided on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, yeah, and the community is going to drive that. So I think that's the reasonable answer. Uh, if, if, you, if you feel strongly about another framework for making those decisions, uh, feel free to contribute it. Great question. Go ahead. Yeah, while remaining on the topic of yeah? compatibility, um, the fact that the providers are one-on-one -on -one compatible able to replicate the existing replica so easily. Um, obviously, Terraform could change something in the way the providers work, push that out, force all the existing providers, um, maintainers of, of providers to update their code, yep. um, which would break, potentially break compatibility with, with OpenTofu. Has that been considered a likely scenario? And if so, what would you do if, if they would yeah, so, uh, so the question is what happens if, uh, if HashiCorp decides that they, uh, they want to flex their muscle and force all of the provider authors to uh, change an interface in order to remain compatible with future versions of Terraform. Um, we'll, we'll have to see what, if that happens, what that would look like. But uh, OpenTofu is not very useful if, you're not, if we don't have a, all, an, like all of the providers out there. Right? So it is vital to the health of the project that we support all of the providers. If there's a change in interface, then we will probably um, make, uh, make changes to OpenTofu to support whatever the new interface is. Um, it is very also important to, uh, to just remind ourselves that the, 
the very long tail, there's a very long tail of providers that are not made by HashiCorp. They're made by uh, the makers of a ton of different commercial software, commercial and non-commercial software. And uh, if there's a big breaking change compatibility, uh, breaking change to, um, to, to the way that the interface works, um, they would have to convince a very large amount of folks to, uh, to support the new interface. And we hope that by that time, OpenTofu is large enough that, um, that we would have the community uh, squarely on our side. Um, but very, very good question. Um, it's hard to kind of give a definitive answer other than like, OpenTofu is not useful without pr all the providers. And so we will continue to, to maintain whatever interfaces. I yep. kind of have an extension to that great question. What happens if they change the license of the pro main providers? Um, so th they change the license of the, the ones under the HashiCorp like namespace? AWS, Google, Azure RM, like what happens? Is there a contingency plan in place if that is the case? Yeah, so in that case, we will most likely have to, f um, have to fork those, uh, those projects that are in the HashiCorp namespace. Um, we've already, I, I can't really say much uh, uh, on that topic, but uh, the, the cloud providers, uh, they're, um, they just want you to use more of their products. Um, so they have a vested interest in making sure that the providers support OpenTofu as well. Um, can't make any official announcements on that yet. Um, that might be on the horizon, maybe, maybe not. Um, so, uh, but, uh, but yeah, they, they care very much. Uh, the cloud providers care very much about, um, about OpenTofu being successful. Um, and uh, and you, can expect, uh, you can expect a lot of goodness to come out of that in the next couple of months. Go for it. Yeah. For somebody who does not yet quite feel confident enough to migrate to OpenTOFU and would like to retain their Terraform configuration, yeah. would your recommendation just be just remain compatible with Terraform 155? Uh, to evaluate whether you want to. Yeah, great question. So if I can like, uh, broaden the question just a little bit. The, the question is, like, if you don't feel super confident in the longevity of, of OpenTOFU, um, or the maturity of OpenTOFU, uh, is it safe to just stay on, on an earlier version of, uh, of Terraform and wait a little bit? Um, uh, yes. Um, so far, nobody has reported any issues. Um, that doesn't mean that there aren't any. Uh, we recommend that you make backups of your state files before, uh, before attempting any migration. Um, 1.5.7 is still open source, and it's, you know, and it's, it's a very good release. Um, you can stay on that for, for as long as you want to. Uh, what, what I meant by the, uh, the best time to migrate is uh, when you're migrating your, your workspace or your, your deployment from 1.5.7 to uh, a later version, it's m at that point in time, that's when it's much easier to go uh, 1.6 uh, with OpenTOFU. But if you're already using Terraform 1.6, it's also very easy to, to, to make that lateral move to OpenTOFU. Over time, as the projects diverge, there will be uh, some features that you might leverage in, on one side and, uh, and not on the other. And so that's just going to make it just a little bit, a little bit more difficult. Um, but this is infrastructure, right? So be cautious. Um, um, back up your state files. Uh, and um, uh, yeah, and there's some, uh, there's, unless there's something really compelling uh, forcing you to make an, up an early upgrade, um, it, it doesn't really matter if you, you wait a little bit longer. Great question. In the back there, go for it. Uh, uh, with the uh, purple shirt. All right. Uh, so we, you talked about Terraform providers and modules that are compatible, but what about other tools like Terraground, TerraSpace, these kind of tools that are wrappers around? Yep. Do you have any um, idea on compatibility, or they just work out of the box if you have an alias? Great question. So the, the, uh, the questions uh, for all of the surrounding ecosystem tools, whether they support OpenTOFU or, or not. Um, so we're very fortunate to have Jim and Josh, the, uh, the two main founders of Terragrunt, to be on, uh, founding members of OpenTOFU. Um, they are very involved in the project. Uh, we have had many discussions on how to uh, maybe, maybe not converge Terragrunt into OpenTOFU and have uh, a lot of the functionality uh, merge into OpenTOFU. Um, <laughs> It's too early. Like they haven't. I don't want to speak for them. It's. Uh, but. Uh, but I do want to say that I do want to remind that they are on the OpenTOFU founding uh, founding board. Um, I think it's Jim who's on the technical steering committee, um, and so uh, so right now um, right now as as far as I know those pro um, you can use the wrapper for uh, um, for OpenTOFU without an issue. 
Uh, I have not personally tested that, so um, I'm just um, relaying what I've heard. Um, and uh, uh, and basically, like the whole community has moved over to OpenTofu. So if there's any issue, um, you should report that, and, and we'll get that fixed. Um, and uh, but essentially, the way, the way to think about it, like the the the, the community is moving towards OpenTofu, uh, and so there it'll kind of look like a closed eco ecosystem on one side and an open ecosystem on the other. And so over time, uh, over time, you, you should see almost all the tools just uh, just support OpenTofu. Um, that's not exactly a perfect answer to your question, but uh, but yeah. Um, and if you want to, uh, if you want an intro to Jim, just come up and I'll, I can make an introduction. Um, yeah, right there you go. Which encryption methods are used to uh, for the 1.7 uh, release to in the states? Please. Good, great question. So the questions: uh, What encryption methods are uh, will be available in 1.7? Um, so we we chose a generic approach so that you can supply your own keys, um, and you'll be able to so so you'll be able to integrate with whatever you want for encryption. Um, the exact specs for of it are described in uh, in issue 297. So if you want to get the if you want to get the exact answer to that question, uh, you can go to that, uh, to that issue. Uh, but the, 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 the problem we're trying to solve is allowing anybody to use whatever uh, encryption provider that they want to. And so it is in scope of that issue to, um, to support anything you might have. Thanks. Great question. Yes, go for it. Yep, uh, great question. So the, the questions like um, uh, broadening it a little bit, but uh, the questions like what happens with the lag when when uh, when Terraform releases something that OpenTofu might not have straight away, right? Is is that a, is that a good good way to broaden it? Yep. So, um, so we, we haven't decided on on, uh, on an exact uh, policy or made any promises in terms of uh, what like lag time we want to uh, we want to respect there. Um, but um, uh, but what we have decided on is that we um, that we do want the projects to be as compatible as possible. Uh, if uh, if there's something in if if there's something that that you see on the Terraform side that. Um, uh, that creates some issues there, then we are going to prioritize that. Um, now, I don't really know, I, we have not discussed what sort of um, ETA promises or like what sort of uh, lag time promises um, on that side. Um, but I, I can look into that more if you want to. And, and uh, if you come up to me, we can, I, can, uh, I can give you a, a, a more detailed answer afterwards. Yeah, great question. This is a great community, by the way. I love the questions. In the back there. Yeah. So the the questions: uh, How do you get commercial support for Open Tofu? The same way you would get uh, support for Terraform. Um, fantastic question. Um, there's uh, so I think there's a brown. There's there's a, a lot of full-time contributors now to to uh, Open Tofu that uh, are employed by um, Spacelift, by M0, by Scalar, by a number uh, a number of other organizations. And those organizations, as part of their commercial offerings also offer uh, professional services or support for OpenTOFU. Um, there's also a number of consultancies that, uh, that have announced that they would pr uh, offer support. Um, I have not looked into the cost or terms of that. Um, but uh, but the, the answer is that you're, you're, we're, we're seeing a broad ecosystem of folks that are offering uh, help in, in some manner. And so that means that you've got choice of who to work with, and that's why I like open ecosystems, right? You got a choice, you got folks competing against each other uh, to provide more value to you. Um, did that fully answer your question, or you have a follow-on? Yeah, just for, yeah. I work at a company, and we are not allowed to use open products without any commercial support. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, so so it's a, it's a, so commercial support is as of today available from multiple vendors. Um, I think I don't know if it's possible to get support without using the commercial projects. Um, I can I can figure that out for you and let you know. But um, uh, it is it is definitely possible. Yeah. Any last few questions? Yes. Yeah, so the question is, what about the, the, the HL language? Uh, so HL is still, uh, is still under, uh, under, the, uh, under an open source license. Um, we don't really have plans on making a fork of HCL into another language. Uh, we're trying really hard to stay focused on the, uh, the, 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 the Terraform, uh, the, that layer of things. Um, there's been some discussions internally, like what happens if HashiCorp decides to make some changes there as well. Um, we don't fully, ex like we're not naive, we, we know there, that the success of OpenTofu does, uh, is a problem for HashiCorp and so we expect, uh, we expect there to, to be some further uh, obstacles along the, along the way. Um, so we do have a few contingencies, none of them are like, uh, we, we haven't, in the order of priority of things, we really wanted to get you that stable release out. We want to get you 1.7 with uh, a, a compelling feature for, for, uh, for you to migrate. We're focusing on those fir uh, for first, but in the meantime, we're, we still have in the back of our minds um, contin like working on contingency plans if, uh, if other parts of the stack are changed. Um, yeah. All right, we might have time for one more question. Okay, one more. Going once, going twice. Yes, you got it. Dothan, go for it. Yeah, uh, so thank you very much for that question. I promise I did not ask him to ask that question. Um, so uh, I'm going to be working with, uh, with Toshin and, and others uh, for uh, next, year's, um, uh, next year's track for, for OpenTofu. Um, I'm, on the, uh, uh, I'm one of the chairs for the Linux Foundation uh, for the uh, Cube, uh, KubeCon uh, OpenTofu Day um, program. So um, there's a lot of overlap in... in in content there, so uh, I'm going to be working to, to, to make sure that next year you guys get a lot more than just me tap dancing here uh, to give you some, um, some, uh, some, good, uh, some good talks for, uh, for next year. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, one last thing. Um, one last thing. I did print uh, some really cute stickers to celebrate those who have made a successful migration those working at in on uh, academic or scientific projects. So if you want some cute stickers, I've got a bunch here. Come up and uh, you've been, you guys have been a great audience. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, thank you. A little gift from uh, the